All right, so we're finishing up our series, um, uh, Better Decisions and Fewer Regrets, and I hope that uh, it's been helpful uh, for you as we have gone through this series of how do we make uh, consistently good decisions, and, uh, and because those understanding that those decisions, they don't just impact um, you know, each one of us personally, but they, they have generational impacts that you are being impacted by decisions that were made, maybe by, um, you know, grandparents that you never even met. And, uh, and, and how much of that is, you know, we, we are affected by. And so understanding that um, is, is, is so crucial. And asking good questions leads us to making better decisions. And so as we kind of, you know, wrap this series up, um, I want to talk about something that I talk about a lot, and, uh, and, and I, and I ref- refer to this term a lot, principle or principles, and, and, and I talk about it a lot. And sometimes, um, for those of you who have been around the Crossy for a long time, you know, maybe I, I have explained this. Um, for those of you who are maybe new online or new in, in, in the room, um, I want to be able to explain it to you. So at the expense of some of you that this is going to be a review, um, this is so important to understand what, what a principle is and what it is not. And, uh, and in terms of what we're going to talk about today, it is so extremely important to understand how it works. And so um, to kind of illustrate it, I want to do a couple of things. Um, but first of all, I want to leverage a principle. Now, this is going to be really, really interesting, and I guarantee you, we're, we are going to, we are going to break ourselves against the principle here this morning. Okay, and, and uh, but we're going to try and submit to it, but we 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 can't break it. We'll either submit to it or we'll break ourselves against it, but we'll never break the principle. So here's what I want to try and do, and uh, we'll see how successful we are. So. Uh, we're going to leverage the principle, and I'm going to hit the beach ball over here to Randy, and, uh, and if you guys can hit it and go along the back row all the way over to here, and if you guys can hit it back over to me, you think we can get this done without dropping it? Come on, team. Sure, there's, there's the confidence I was looking for. All right, so let's leverage this principle. Here we go. Oh, 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 you got to get out of the chair. Hit it up. Hit it up. Yep, wide base. Callie's going to hit it. Here we go. Going, oh, we're going back the other direction. (laughs) All right, poke it up in the air again. Here we go. Hit it all the way over there. We need a big slam. Oh, good job. Good job. Go. Still going. There you go. You didn't realize you could play a game in church. There we go. Nice. Sandy will hit it. Yay. Okay. So we leveraged the principle. We broke ourselves against the principle. What was the principle? No? Nope. It's something that's operating behind the scenes. Gravity. Gravity. And the only reason it fell to the ground is because gravity pulled it to the ground. And there was no one there to keep it up. If there was no gravity, there wouldn't be any game because it wouldn't come down. So we were leveraging that principle. The principle is operating behind the scenes all the time. It's always there. You can't turn it on. You can't shut it off. It's just there. And you will either leverage it or you'll break yourself against it. Another example, Archimedes' principle. Do you remember that from school? All of you do. I know you do, right? No, you don't remember Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle is, uh, is the buoyant force 
underneath an object in fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid of the object displaced. I knew you remembered that from school. <laughs> Actually, Archimedes, he, he was an old guy, like super old. It's unbelievable. I mean, he came up with this. And you know what? Here's the thing. He didn't invent it. He discovered it. And that's, that's, that's why it's so important to understand what a principle is, because principles are operating all the time. You don't turn them on, and you don't shut them off. It's just, it's just there. It's always there. And so Archimedes was the one that came along and just discovered a principle that has been there since the beginning of time. It's the reason why you take a pebble in water, and it just goes right to the bottom. But that floats. In fact, you put the pebble in the boat and it still floats. How's that possible? See, when you, when you submit to the principle, you can take an aircraft carrier that weighs millions and millions of pounds and it will float every single time. It's not like, well, I built this one. Man, I hope it floats. Doggone it. We spent, you know, a trillion dollars on this boat, and it sank to the bottom. And, you know, we just, we don't know exactly how it floats. We just think sometimes you get lucky. No, you don't get lucky. You either submit to that principle, and every single time it will float, or you don't submit to the principle, and every single time you don't build a boat according to the principle, it will sink 100% of the time. So understanding what a principle is, is it, it's crucial to understanding that's how God has made the world to work. He governs the, the physical world through principles, he governs the spiritual world through principles. He governs the relationship, our relational world, through principles. And we will either submit to them or we will break ourselves against them, but you can't get around the principle. You can't turn it on. You can't shut it off. See, a principle, it's not a rule that you follow. Principles aren't rules that you follow Principles follow you. You see, if it was a rule that you followed, well, you could just unfollow it and, and, and the principle would shut off. But it don't work that way. You can't shut it off. And it doesn't matter. It does, the principles, it doesn't care if you follow it or not. It'll follow you. It'll follow you. See, <clears throat> it's not something you choose to apply. It applies itself to you. It doesn't care if you apply it or not. It's applying to you whether you want it to or not. Because it's always on, going on, behind the scenes. It's not a law that you can break. It's not a law that you can break it's, it's not like one of the Ten Commandments. I mean, you could break one of the Ten Commandments, right? But it's not like that. It, it, it's different. Principles are different than laws. Laws you could break. Principles you can't break. They're always going on. And if ignored, a principle could break you. It will break you. And you will break yourself against it. See, Principles are experienced and therefore explained, but not invented. God's the one who invented principles, and they are always operating, and you don't turn them on or shut them off. So with that kind of backdrop of understanding what a principle is, and that's why 
you know, we talk about commands, and commands are great to know, and, and our Heavenly Father loves us enough to give us some laws and to give us some commands, but He's loved us enough to, to share with us all kinds of principles that we can either submit to or we could just break ourselves against. And so today I want to talk about the principle of the path. The principle of the path in terms of how it affects our, our decision making. And the principle, the principle of the path says your direction, not your intention. Your direction will determine your destination. Well, I want to go to Kozad. So if I just keep walking this way, I'll make it to Kozad, won't I? I mean, I intend to make it to Kozad. In case you're disoriented, Kozad's this way. You knew that, right? Right? You're like, yeah, yeah, I knew that. I, uh. See, the principle of the path, it doesn't matter what you intend. Well, I didn't intend. See, I didn't intend to end up here in life. I didn't in intend to end up here financially. I didn't intend to, to end up here in my career path. I didn't intend. I didn't intend. The principle of the path says your direction, not your intention. Determines destination. And so today, the question that I want us to ask is the maturity question, and it is, what is the wise thing to do? What is the wise thing to do? In, 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 in thinking in terms of, of the principle of the path and, and how principles operate, what is the wise thing to do? Not what is the legal thing to do. Because sometimes when we're making decisions, we think, well, if it's legal, then it's an option. Right? <laughs> but come on. Those of you who have lived enough life, everything that's legal isn't necessarily wise. Right? So that's not really one of the, you know, it's like, well, if it's legal, if it's legal then let's go with it. Mm. That, that's, that's, that might lead you in, you know, in, in a great intention, but we all know that destination isn't a great place. And we will break ourselves against the principle of the path. And the question is, what direction are you living? When you take the direction of your life, and, and, and if you were honest with yourself, what destination right now with the decisions that you are making, and if you keep going down that path, what's the destination of that relationally? What's the destination of that financially? What's the destination of that in terms of your parenting? I think you, you probably know, and this is a terrifyingly, you know, it, 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 it kind of wipes the fog away of what's the wise thing to do. And Jesus kind of illustrates this principle in Matthew at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, his most famous sermon. And this was a sermon that, that he preached, I think, many, many, many times in, in every area that he would go in, um, that he would preach this sermon because this sermon kind of encapsulates uh, a, a broad range of everything that Jesus taught. And at the end of this sermon, he kind of gives this illustration. In fact, if you grew up in church and, uh, and went to Sunday school, you probably know a song. I, I will try my best not to sing it for you, um, but there's a song that goes along with this. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24, Jesus says, anyone who listens, this is key, to my teaching and follows it is wise. And sometimes we read so fast we don't slow down enough to observe. So let's observe this. Anyone who listens, is listening different than hearing? It's a lot different. Listening means your ears are actually open. Listening means you've actually are, 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 are tuned in. Right now, some of you are listening. Some of you are just hearing. Some of you online, you, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to do two things at the same time. 
And so you're maybe hearing something in the background, but now that I'm talking directly to you, maybe you've turned and now you're listening. You're tuned in. Your ears are open. Maybe even your heart is open to learn. That's listening. And Jesus says, anyone who listens, who who has their ears open, tuned in, with an open heart to learn, anyone who listens to my teaching and says, man, that was a great idea, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. I mean, that's the majority of the time what we do with sermons, right? Oh, good sermon. Good job, preacher. Good job. What are you going to do with that? Uh, Probably nothing. Right? Right? I mean, it's like, and this is why, you know, some people love the crossing, some people hate it after a while, because like, it's like they actually want us to do the stuff, not just, you know, come in and hear it. Like, I'm getting tired of that. Anyone who listens to my teaching and what? Does something about it. Like they actually change something. Like they change, they make a decision to change the direction in which they are going. They're going to submit to the path. And if, if Jesus is the one who created principles and he created the way that the world works both physically and in terms of, of, of the principles that, that govern every part of our life, then it would do us well to submit to it. So anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. They're a person of wisdom. James, the brother of Jesus, says, hey, if you're lacking wisdom, just ask God for it. And I would encourage you every single day that that this would be a part of the routine of your life to say, Jesus, would you you give me wisdom? I am desperate for wisdom. Would you grant me wisdom in every area of my life? Because I don't want to be going down a path that I'm not even, I, I wasn't even aware I was going down this path. I want to be wise enough to be able to see that I'm going down a path that is going to end up at a destination that I really want to end up at. So anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. And then he uses this analogy or simile. He says, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. So, observing this, um, my, my brother and I, we used to build, build houses, and, uh, and big houses, many times, it would take us an entire year to build a house. This is a process. Building a house is a process. If you're going to build a custom home, it is, it is a process, and, and, uh, and you're doing most of the work inside of it. it. It is a long, long journey. It is a difficult journey, and there are steps forward, and there are steps backwards. Any of you who have, you know, you've designed a home, and you have built, built a home, it's like, oh, man, that's a lot of work. I mean, it is a process. It is, it is like a person who builds a house. It is a process to build your life on the, the principles of how God's made the world to work. And you learn, and you grow, and you fall, and you put it in the ditch, and God picks you up again, and you learn, and you grow, and you fall, and you break yourself against the principle, and you're like, oh, I can't believe I did it again. I did it again. I can't believe I did it again. And your heavenly Father picks you up, sticks you right back on the bike again, and says, okay, let's try again. But this has a solid foundation. In construction terms, we call it a footer. Typically, a footer is 8 inches thick and 16 inches wide. And it has uh, two pieces of rebar going down the middle of it. So they're still inside of it and concrete. It is a rock. It is a solid rock. And you can build a house on top of that solid rock and expect it to stay there. And Jesus says, anyone who will listen and submit to 
and actually do something about the way that I've made the world to work is like a person that's building a house on a solid foundation. And this is so interesting to me. He goes on with this analogy, and he kind of turns it, and he says, okay, though the rain comes, well, time out. Hey, Jesus, I'm submitting. I'm submitting to the way that the, the, the world works. I, I'm following you. I thought if I followed you, part of that would, you would make my life easy. Right? Since I'm following you, my life should be easy. I shouldn't have rain. I shouldn't have torrents. I shouldn't have floodwaters. And Jesus just says, hey, it doesn't matter if you are a good person, a not so good person, if you're wondering, why do bad things happen to good people? Bad things happen to all people. We live under the umbrella of sin, and since we do, bad things happen to all of us. And so Jesus just says, hey, there's going to be some rain that's going to come in your life. Just expect it. But here's the difference. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, they're, they're beating against your life, it won't collapse. Why? Because it's built on solid rock. It's built on a foundation that you have been that you have been submitting to in terms of principles. And so when, when the pressures and the things of life come, you will stand. You will be good. You will have peace. You will have something the rest of the world doesn't have and is desperately searching for. And so he says, if, if you will make this the, the principle of the path, the direction of your life, you will stand. But in contrast, anyone who, oh, that word's different. What is this one? Hears. They're not necessarily listening. Kind of doing the two things at the same time. Not, uh, I mean, yeah, it's some chatter. Yeah, 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 I've heard that. Preacher guy, preacher guy, good. Yep, got that one. Heard that. Mm-hmm. Yep, whatever. Went to church today, listened to it, turned it on. Yeah, went through that. Anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it, doesn't submit to it, doesn't do anything about it, is foolish. And, and man, that seems harsh, Jesus. Why is that foolish? Because it's like a person who builds their house on sand without a footer, without any rock. They just, they, just, they just started putting the structure right on the sand. They just, they just put the bottom plate right on the sand and started building the rest of the house. And you know what? At first, as long as, you know, you know everything is working out and you're kind of controlling outcomes, controlling outcomes, that house looks beautiful. Your life could look beautiful. Everyone could be, you know, you could be the envy of everyone. As long as everything's kind of working out. But this word right here is key. When. Not if. When. When the rain comes. And it will come. And the floods come. And they will come. And the winds beat against your life. Beat against that house. It will collapse with a mighty crash. And you will break yourself against the principle that was operating behind the scenes the entire time. That's why understanding what a principle is is so crucial to understand. So interesting, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed. <laughs> 
Because they hadn't heard teaching like this ever. They were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority. It was like, it's like, man, that teaching has handles on it. Like, that's really practical. That, that's like, I, I could do something with that. Quite unlike their teachers of religious law. So my question to you is, what direction are you living? What direction are you living? Are, are you living in a direction where your ears are and your heart is open to Jesus as Lord of your life? And, the, and, and learning and being open to the principles of how he has made this world to work? Or are you kind of doing your own thing? And you think, and, and here's where principles will get you every single time. Principles don't usually operate by the law of Pinocchio. You know what the law of Pinocchio is? See, this is a little bit different because because Archimedes' principle, this is more like the law of Pinocchio. If you don't get this right, you sink immediately. But most principles, if you, if you think, you know what, I'm going to try and get around this principle, I don't think it applies to me. And so you do something that you think, man, I'm breaking that principle, and guess what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. You're like, see? doesn't apply to me. I can get away with that. I can do that. Nothing happened. And so you do that. And you create an appetite. And you do a little bit more. And the appetite says to feed me. And you feed yourself a little bit more. And 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 finally, you have reached a destination. Financially, maybe. Relationally, maybe. And payday has come. Harvest is here. You experience a little bump in the road, and you were thinking, oh, I could control the outcomes, I can control the outcomes, I can control the outcomes, and all of a sudden, you can't control the outcomes anymore. And the outcome is here. What direction are you living? The decisions that you are making determine the direction that you are living, not your intention, your decisions. So here's a grid that I think is helpful, and, and hopefully it'll be helpful for you as well. Based on your past experience, your present circumstances, and your future hopes and dreams, what's the wise thing for you to do? Based on your past experiences, those past experiences, I would imagine, you know what, they, 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 you know, they, they, they encapsulate many times where you broke yourself against the principle, and, and now that as I'm talking about it, it's kind of like, ah, I thought God was just kind of beating me up. No, you were beating yourself up. You were just breaking yourself against the principle, and, and it was breaking your Father in heaven's heart watching you break yourself. And so based on past experiences, and sometimes maybe it's a relational break or a financial break or whatever it might be, and, 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 and those past experiences, and you learn some things from those past experiences, and your present circumstances, where are you presently? Where are you presently? And in and, and the season that you're in in life, and future hopes and dreams. What's the destination that you want to be financially? What, what's the destination you want to be in terms of your marriage? What, what, what's the, what's the, you know, the future hopes and dreams in terms of a relationship that maybe you want to have with, with a significant other? Future hopes and dreams in terms of your, your job that's, that, that gives you purpose and, and fulfill, fulfillment in life. What's your future hopes and dreams? Based on past experiences, current circumstances and where I see myself right now and future hopes and dreams that I'm looking for down the road and the destinations where I want to go, what's the wise thing for you to be doing right now? See, I think that is extremely clarifying. 
you might not like the answer. And so the tendency will be, I don't really like that answer, so I'm going to try and get around the principle and hope I end up at the same destination that I want to end up at. But you will break yourself against the principle of the path. See? Your Father in heaven loves you. He loves you. And so understanding the principles that govern every part of our lives, submitting to those, making decisions that will go down the direction to the destination that we want to go down is the path that will lead us there. So may we submit to him. May we ask him for wisdom. May we ask and put into that grid past experiences, current circumstances, future hopes and dreams. For you individually, what is the wise thing for you to do? For you as a couple, what's the wise thing for you to do? For you as a teenager, what's the wise thing for you to do? As a college student, what's the wise thing for you to do? As parents, what's the wise thing for you to do? As grandparents, what's the wise thing for you to do? See, it, it will lead you to a good place. As a church, based on past experiences, current circumstances, future hopes and dreams, what's the wise thing for us to do? Love it. May we as a church, individually, corporately, operate in this way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Even when we try our best to just control outcomes and live as if the principles don't apply to us, <laughs> and you love us so much, and you're just like, it's just not going to go well for you if you do that. And, uh, and yet we try, and we try, and so many times we we beat our life up pretty good doing it. And God, sometimes we convince ourselves that you no longer love us, and that's so not true. You love us as much as you ever have. And we could decide today to begin sowing and making decisions in a different direction. So for some in the room and some watching, that's where they're at. They, they need to um, have some things that need to come to a necessary end. I pray that you would give them the courage to do that. God, I pray that uh, those that need to sow in a different direction, you would give them the courage to do that. God, I pray that we individually and corporately as a church, that we would ask the question, what's the wise thing for us to do? I pray that you would lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, Crossing. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'd like to take a, just a couple minutes to kind of recap what we talked about um, and, and give us some challenges for this week. I'd like to quote one of the things that you said. It's, it's, it's like they actually want us to do this stuff. <laughs> I love that quote. We actually want you to do this we stuff. We actually want this you to do this stuff. This is actually applicable to your life. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked about the principle of the path. Yeah. Your direction, not your intention, yeah. determines your destination. Mm -hmm. You talked about what is the wise thing to do. Mm -hmm. So my question for you okay. is, can you give us an example in your life of when you broke yourself against the principle of the path? <laughs> yeah. So... <clears throat> Um, I have broken myself uh, financially many times against the principle of the path. And, you know, there was something that I wanted. I wanted, I wanted to have something before I had the money to pay for it, so I leveraged something else to, to get it ahead of time. And uh, our culture is a debt culture. And so here's, here's the, the financial principle that scripture talks about, the borrower is the slave to the lender. That's a principle. It just always is. And, and it's not right or wrong. 
It's not right or wrong. It just is. And if you don't like being a slave, well, then you should probably not be a slave to the, to the lender. If, if you don't mind, then, then have at it. But, but the principle is, hey, you just need to know you're going to be a slave if you do that. And uh, so there's been a couple times I've, I've uh, done that and looked back and was like, ah, I regret doing that. And in fact, I kind of, I, I bought a brand new truck one time. <laughs> and, I uh, and I ended up just getting rid of it. I just ended up selling. And, and then, because uh, I'm like, it has all of these gadgets I don't even use. I don't even want. I, I don't even like. And, and yeah, it's a cool truck, but. I don't use any of this, and I don't need a cool truck. So I went down, and now the, my truck has, <laughs> it rolls the windows down the old-fashioned way. Yeah. It's still a good truck. But though. it gets me from point A to point B. <laughs> yeah. So we're not perfect. No. No. No, no. This is something that we are still Yeah, I, I still break myself against principles Freaking. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what practical advice would you give to those who are, currently breaking themselves against the principle of the path? Well... Like, what practical so steps? First of all, acknowledge it. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Uh, don't deny it. Don't explain yourself around it. Don't justify it. Just come to terms. I, I, this is true. And then you've got to find someone mm. that can help you turn that around. Because yeah. I think so many times we know it, um, but we don't have enough mustard or courage to just do it on mm -hmm. our own, or we do for a short period of time, but then we, we kind of revert back. And yeah. so having others that you've, um, you've asked permission or you give them permission to walk with you in that, um, if it's a life group, that's, mm. that's gold. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so. so number one, acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Number two, have people walk with you through it. Yep. 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 So that is the wise thing to do, right? That's the wise thing to do. That is the wise thing to do. Mm -hmm. And we actually want to do <laughs> the things that we talk about. <laughs> That's, right. That's awesome. Well, That's do you have right. anything else for? No, I just, I, you know, today's message is, uh, it's maybe one of the things that drives why I do what I do. Because one of the most heartbreaking things is to see people end up at a destination that they didn't know maybe was coming or mm, they yeah. certainly didn't want to get to. When they set out to do whatever it was they were going to do relationally or financially or whatever it was, that wasn't the destination they had in mind. Mm -hmm. And so to, to end up there um, when, they, when they could have ended up in a different place is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And so... I just, uh, we as a church, um, this is what we're all about, yeah. to be able to teach what those principles are in very practical ways and then walk with people um, as, we, as we practice and mm -hmm. hopefully get better and better at submitting to those principles that are always governing every part of our life. Amen. Thanks, right. Eric. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We'll, have, we'll see you next week. Have a great week. See ya.